Welcome to 90 Minutes Japan. I'm Sebastiano Mereu. This week's J1 action started on Friday with Kashiwa Reiso losing 4 0 to now 19 times unbeaten Omiya Ardija. The game started relatively balanced, but as soon as Omiya detected the holes in Reiso's shaky defense, it didn't take them long to shift into second gear and outclass Kashiwa. It was a fun match to watch, also because Reisol never really gave up. As for Omiya, there was a wonderful proof of strength, attitude and skills. And after that win, Ardija was number one in the J1 table, at least until the Saturday matches started. Then on Saturday, Albirex Nigata lost against Kashima Antlers by two goals to three. Nagoya Grampus and Sanfrecce Hiroshima played a 1-1 draw in a hard-fought match. I'm not a big fan of Nagoya's football style th these days, and in this match I credit the entertainment part to Sanfrecce. Their play was smooth and very elegant, and the action that preceded Hiroshima's equalizer was a perfect combination of that. Good to see that despite Hiroshima's suboptimal record in the AFC Champions League, they are in good shape for the J-League. Oita Trinita, still looking for their first win this season, drew 0-0 in an away game against Cerezo Osaka. The first unexpected result of the day came from Yokohama, where F Marinos drew one all to Benfore Kofu. Yokohama might have been on top of it, but as I like to say, if you don't score, your opponents will, and so did Kofu. A late equalizer by Aoyama cost F Marinos two points this week and their top placement in the table. Our friend Tony D summed up Yokohama's performance in one tweet. Apart from grumbling about the referee, can't blame anyone but ourselves for not finishing our chances. Not unlucky, wasteful. In Iwata, Jubilee Iwata finally found their first win of the season by beating guest Shonan Belmare with four goals to none. Our friend Thomas Birch saw the match and will give us now a review. In his premature relegation dogfight, Shonan Belmare suffered a humiliating 4 0 defeat at the hands of Jubilee Iwata, who picked up the first win of the season. Belmare came into this game on the back of their first league win, but got off to the worst start, conceding after just 30 seconds with the goal coming from the superb Hiroki Yamada. Baumara came back into it and had a goal disallowed, wrongly in my opinion, in the 8th minute with Kawaguchi failing to come for the ball on the 6 yard line following a free kick. Iwata regained their composure and scored in the 28th minute the play starting with a long free kick and Matsuura ghosted past three static defenders to slide the ball past the unprotected Abe in goal. Into the second half and Baumara learnt nothing new in defence again static as a precise and spot Jubilo attack following their own corner, resulting in Yamamoto sneaking in at the back post ahead of his marker to make it 3-0 to the hosts. Shonen really had to go for it after that, but their toothless attack without top scorer Kirino never really threatened and was made to pay with his superb finish by Yamazaki in the 81st minute to wrap up the game, with the Balmaro defence conceding too much space and time for Jubilo to expose. Having watched Jubilo a few times, they look better than their 17th place standing, suggesting if they get Maida ticking, they will move away from any danger and into mid-table obscurity. As for Balmari, they are making silly defensive mistakes and they lack a goal score that can provide them with a threat and that could gain them some invaluable points. They have a lot to learn, but the, the learning curve looks too steep for them right now. I'd love for them to prove me wrong though. So the match ended, Jubilo at a 4, Shannon Balmari nil, and a well-deserved Jubilo win. A fantastic game in Saitama saw so Shimizu Espals beat Durava Reds 1-0. I have to admit that I have a love-hate relationship with the Reds. They do play good football, but are often cocky and therefore inattentive, which makes them a victim of their attitude. And today was one of those days. Urawa tried some sort of tiki-taka play, but did never find the back of the net. They had 11 shots on target against Espals' 4. That said it right there. A very wasteful Urawa performance. And then, when Bare opened the score for S-Pulse, Urawa got caught by surprise and realized they should shift gear. Unfortunately, it was too late to react and the match was lost. Thomas basically summed up the game in one tweet, saying, The difference between Urawa Reds and Shimizu S-Pulse? A goal scorer. Urawa Reds nil, Shimizu S-Pulse won. And the last match of the day saw FC Tokyo win 2-0 against Kawasaki Frontale. On Sunday, Vegalta Sendai will host Sagan Tosu at Yurtek Stadium. The J1 table now sees Omiya Ardija in pole position, followed by Yokohama F Marinos and Urawa Reds. 
At the bottom we have Oita Trinita with 3 points and still in search for a win, Jubilio Iwata with 5 and Shonan Del Mare with 6 points. I hope you had a good J1 weekend so far, check back tomorrow for J2, thanks to Thomas for his contribution and to all of you for watching. I am Sebi and you just watched 90 Minutes Japan.